What's up, everyone? My name is Dre Manning. Can I get a year? This is 60 Second Sunday. Today, we're going to talk about cinematic footage. Every filmmaker's ambition is to create this super cinematic movie that will be celebrated by all of their friends and family and just creative folk all around. I know it's mine, so I'm pretty sure it's yours as well. In order to be able to create that cinematic product, you first have to understand a few rules. These rules are put in place so that you get a better understanding of how to capture that cinematic footage. But for today, we'll only be talking about things on the camera side. So let's focus on ISO, shutter, frames per second, and aperture. Let's head over to my computer. Let's get it cracking. All right, so right now we're looking at what's called the triangle of exposure. I want to make this perfectly clear. This will not be a scientific explanation. If you do, know, if you do not know what shutter, aperture, or ISO is, I will leave links below that can further explain it to you. This is for those who have an understanding of what it does to their camera. These three settings do to their camera when, uh, when they're altered. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight into everything, right? If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want to make sure your shutter, this right here, is double that. So double of 24 frames per second would be 48 to 50, to a 50th of a second, and it's locked in. You do not change your shutter from that. What that does is it introduces uh, motion blur into the footage and doesn't make everything seem, seem really sharp and in focus. Yeah, ISO, you wanna know your camera's ISO. What is the native ISO? I shoot with a Sony a6300 for video and a Canon 5, 6D, I'm sorry, for photography. So knowing that I shoot an S-Log2 on my Sony, my native ISO is 800. So I try to keep my camera, I'm sorry, my native ISO is 1600. So I try to keep it either below it or right at 1600, which means I might need to incorporate more lighting uh, other than natural light, right? And then my aperture. Whenever you watch your favorite film, you'll notice that uh, some things are in focus, some things are out of focus. That is called bokeh. For those who don't know what bokeh is, I will also leave a link below explaining that. Bokeh allows you to pretty much keep your subject in focus and everything that you don't want in focus blurred out, right? So the bokeh, your, your shallow depth of field starts to fade once you start to reach an f-stop of 4 and above. Everything becomes into focus. So if you want to get those nice cinematic shots, you want to use a faster lens, have it wide open uh, at a stop of maybe, I, I'm going to say honestly, in a stop of 1.2. I've even seen some people use 0.5 and then 0.95. And it's just that simple. You want to make sure whatever frames per second you're shooting in, your shutter is always doubled. Look at it like this. Those two are married. They must stick together till death do us part. There are instances where you can disobey these rules. You want to do it with a purpose. You don't want to do it just because, oh, it looks cool. What type of emotion in your film are you trying to evoke? Once you have that clear understanding, sky is the limit. As always, my name is Dre Manning. This is 60 Second Sunday. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to the channel, or I will come and get you. As always, none of this matters if you don't get out there and apply it. Just get out there and shoot your shot. Peace on. I gotta do better.